Hello everyone, and welcome to my third video involving this Packard Bell desktop PC. As you may know from my previous videos, I've been working hard on cleaning, repairing, and restoring this computer. I've been successful so far, despite some difficulties. My most recent achievement was getting an SSD installed into this computer, along with installing Windows XP Home Edition and applying Service Pack 3. However, there were still plenty of updates and drivers missing, most notably the audio drivers. So, in this video, I'll be getting the latest Windows XP updates installed on this PC. Of course, I cannot do this without connecting it to the internet, so you know what that means. I'll be using my USB wireless adapter with this old PC to see if I can get it connected to the internet. I'll also install some fun software later on in the video. Hope you enjoy. So, here is the TP-Link AC600 USB wireless adapter, which I use to connect my main Windows 11 PC to the internet through our home Wi-Fi network. The box states that the adapter is only compatible with Windows 7 onwards, but I'm going to try it with this old PC anyway. I inserted it into the front USB port, which looked quite ridiculous with the huge antenna sticking out, but whatever. And as expected, Windows could not find a driver automatically and launched the found new hardware wizard. So I got the driver CD out of the box, inserted into the optical drive, and after a few seconds, the installation wizard started automatically. I began installing the drivers and waited a few minutes for the process to complete. It seemed to be going smoothly, until the screen went blank. And then the PC rebooted. Uh oh. When Windows booted back into the desktop, it then told me that the system recovered from a serious error. Turns out a blue screen error occurred, but did not appear because the PC rebooted automatically. I decided to go into the system properties and disable automatic reboot after system failure, and then tried installing the driver once again. Unfortunately, the exact same thing happened, However, this time we could see the blue screen. The error code was bad Paul caller, which relates to a driver problem. What a surprise. After restarting the computer again and waiting for Windows to boot, I thought about entering the device manager to see if I could manually install the driver instead without using the wizard. But then, when Windows reached the desktop, a notification appeared saying that Windows was detecting wireless networks. But I thought the installation failed? And looking in Device Manager, it turned out the driver actually installed successfully, despite the blue screen error. Very strange, but I tried connecting the PC to the home Wi-Fi network anyway to see if it would connect. I selected the right Wi-Fi network, entered the password, waited a few seconds, and it successfully connected. <laughs> I was honestly surprised. I then went on to Internet Explorer and visited the Google homepage to test the connection, and it loaded the Google homepage just fine. Somehow the driver had installed successfully despite two blue screen errors. Very strange, but I was relieved. Now that the computer was connected to the internet, I wanted to get Windows XP fully updated with the latest patches, which are over a decade old now, but whatever. As you may be aware, a few years ago, Microsoft shut down the update servers for the unsupported versions of Windows, including XP. However, there are unofficial methods of installing updates without the need for Microsoft's update servers. One method of doing this is through the Legacy Update project. I remember that the channel Michael MJD posted a video of this project a few years ago, so I rewatched it to help me get started on setting up Legacy Update and understanding how it works. I then visited the Legacy Update website, which thankfully is designed to run on very old versions of Internet Explorer, and then I downloaded the installer from the website. I then ran the program and selected default settings, except for activating Windows which I decided to turn off and try myself later, just in case I needed to reinstall Windows for whatever reason. In retrospect, this probably would not have mattered at all, but never mind. Anyways, one minute later, and legacy update setup completed, and then search for updates. It needed to upgrade some components first, so I let those install. And then once that completed, I checked for updates once again, and it ended up finding 129 updates. Yeah, quite a lot of updates to go through, but not really a surprise since this was the first time this PC has been connected to the internet with this installation of Windows. Before installing these updates though, I scrolled to the bottom to check if any drivers were found by Legacy Update, and something immediately caught my attention. An audio driver was found. I had no idea if it was the correct one, but I was intrigued, so I disabled all pending updates and selected the drivers only. If the driver failed to install, I could just simply uninstall it in safe mode, so there was no harm in trying. A couple minutes later, Windows finished installing the drivers with seemingly no issues. I went into the control panel, opened the sound properties, and Windows was recognising NVIDIA Enforce Audio. I was even more excited, but then I realised the speakers weren't even plugged in. After fixing my mistake, I opened the sound properties again, selected a sound file, and... Perfect. 
for the first time in 12 years, the PC was outputting sound again. I was so happy that this issue was finally fixed. The original audio drivers went missing back in 2013 because Windows XP needed to be reinstalled due to a boot loop issue. This led to some drivers being lost, including the audio drivers. I must have been looking for the wrong audio drivers when trying to fix this issue in the past, but now I no longer needed to worry as Legacy Update had finally found the correct drivers. Awesome! I then proceeded to install the previously mentioned 130 updates. Thankfully this only took about 20 minutes due to the fast transfer speed of the new SSD. And then once this process was complete, I turned the computer back on to make sure everything was working still. Windows was taking slightly longer to boot up, which is understandable. Pens, focus, please, uh, whatever. Upon startup, a new dialog box appeared stating that Windows XP was going out of support soon, even though that already happened nearly 11 years ago. Internet Explorer was also updated to version 8, which was released the same year as Windows 7. I decided to open it and visit the oldnet.com and browse some old websites for a minute. It's always fascinating seeing how websites look back in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Oh, and there were more updates that were pending, so I let those download and install. And finally, over 150 updates later, Windows XP was fully up to date, with the audio now working. Time to play some classic 3D pinball. Oh, and I also noticed later that this random user account appeared, which I've never seen before. Looking at this old forum online, it turns out that the account is automatically added when you install .NET Framework, which must have been included among the updates that were recently applied. So, in the end I decided to delete the user account as I just didn't really need it. Before ending the video short, I thought it would be a good idea to install a PC game. Naturally, the first one I thought of was Robot Wars Extreme Destruction, which was released in 2002, so not long before this PC was made. I vividly remember watching my older brother play this game on this exact PC when he bought his copy in 2012, and it ran quite terribly, but I'm going to install it anyway. After inserting the disc, the game took about one minute to install, and then it opened. <laughs> Can't wait to see this game run at 5 FPS. This looks different actually. It looks all weird and shiny. Hmm. This is probably just how it looked on this same system years ago. Uh, yeah. I'll just keep it at the default settings right now. I don't think it's going to run too well. Uh, yeah, Annihilator. Let's just go all in. Yeah, these are like the six or seven robots that we get uh, from the beginning. Alright, I'll do TV Studio. I will try Tokyo after, that seems to be the laggiest arena, like the, the slowest, so this is presumably, oh, oh, this doesn't look right, something's off, the game definitely did not look like this years ago, why is it so dark, what the hell, oh there we go, D did it run this bad? used to play it. Surely not. Please a pause. Yeah, when the game... Oh, that's weird. The lights disappear. Mm. Right, I'm gonna put the graphics lower significantly. I'll turn down... I'll turn off the shadows and I'll put the visual detail to, like, medium. I find it funny how uh, the Optiplex from 2008... Uh, like, I tried running this game one time on that and it doesn't actually run that much better. <laughs> so... Oh, that's much better. Was it just the shadows? It's weird though, how when it starts, there's like no light. <laughs> but then when the battle begins, it's fine. Like, I don't remember that happening years ago. Yeah, and then the lights turn on, but then it lags more. <laughs> Actually, the pit. Oh, who was that that just drove right into the... Okay, well done. What the hell? Some interesting stuff going on. 
on the floor. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know if it's anything to do with the display drivers. Maybe I need to reinstall them. I don't know. Look at the mini map in the corner as well. Look how bright it is. Wow. Tornado. <laughs> Bye. What the hell happened to Thermidor? <laughs> Missing his claws. That's weird. Also, Thermidor is absolutely tiny for some reason. It's meant to be like twice the size of that, I'm sure. Maybe not that big, but it's, like, it's meant to be a lot bigger than what it is. <laughs> oh dear, everything is just slow. <laughs> I mean, the game definitely ran slow, kind of like this, uh, years ago when we used to play it. Alright, am I going to win this battle? I doubt it, because I haven't actually done that much. But knowing the judge's decision system in this game, it's, it's quite bad. Yeah, I lost. Okay, then one. Alright, cool. I'm going to go on a different arena, so let's try the Tokyo Rooftop. <laughs> let's use the tour this time. One of two actual robots that are available to begin with. This looks okay, I think. This actually is running better. TV studio, I swear. Okay. Try to break the glass. Come on, come on. Come on. Break. Break. It doesn't want to break. No, Demel, no! Jesus. Oh, there goes RefBot. No, I forgot about sticky keys. Are you serious? Okay, let's turn it off. Quick. Don't use the shortcut. There we go. By all of oh, all right. Let's try again. No. <laughs> okay. The game crashed because I went off it. Right. Let's try it again. Maybe I'll just do I'll do New York now because I haven't tried that yet. Let's see if this level is um, if this arena is also like dark when it first starts. No, and also. The weird white blocks behind these turnstiles are also gone, which is funny, because I think this is the only system I remember seeing that on. Every other system I play this game on, well, th there's like white blocks visible behind them, which is really weird. Well done, Firestorm, driving straight into the chair. How has the Tokyo rooftop run the best so far? This is like the opposite of what normally happens. What the... No, RefBot. RefBot sometimes glitches and causes... Oh, it's not actually RefBot this time. This is just the way the game is. Sometimes there's random black flickering textures on the screen. Because it's just broken. I can't believe this game passed, like, epilepsy tests. Thinking about it. Whoa! Kill a lot, what are you doing? Why are you even here, man? What is he... Get off! What is he doing? Why is the train so shiny? It's not usually like that, that's funny. Alright, get in, get in. No, no, not me. Oh, everything's so bloody slow and laggy, Jesus. Get in, yes! And stay in there, yes. Thank you. Now let's watch the train slowly leave. Yeah, there we go. Everything is just slow. Right, okay, all of these robots are desperately trying to get in the train, it seems. Like, what? Yeah, you can all get in there. Or, or go upside down, that works. Oh, you can do both. Yeah, go in the train. Perfect. Right. Oh, what? How did you escape? You already just said that. Bloody hell. Oh, I won. Alright, cool. I'm just going to briefly go on TV Studio again, just to see if that glitch persists. Uh, I'm just going head to head. This time, maybe for better performance. Now nah, it's still dark when you first enter. That's really strange. Well, the game seems to be working though. It, it runs basically how it did years ago, back in like 2012, when this PC was nearly a decade old, and we used to, well, use it as the main one, install everything on it. Right, I want the piano to fall, please. No, that's missed. Okay. 
Oh, oh, come on. I'm trying to get a drop zone to fallen res revolutionist. Right, well, that's the end of that. Bye. <laughs> I wonder how much RAM is being used right now while the game's open, let's just see. Because I've got Task Manager open. Oh dear. That's bad. That's another reason why I need to get more RAM for this, because the RAM is basically getting filled just by running this game. What are the system requirements? 98 MEXP, 500 MHz AMD Athlon. This is 1.66 GHz, so that's plenty. 16 MB graphics card, but this has 32. For those interested, this is the system information shown in dxdiag.exe. For some reason the system model is just loads of zeros. Weird. And interestingly the manufacturer is labelled as NEC Computers International. Turns out that Packard Bell was owned by NEC between 1994 and 2006. Oh and the PC is also running DirectX 9.0c, which is the latest supported version. One more piece of software I wanted to get installed was Microsoft Office 2000, as the PC originally had it installed from the factory years ago. Setup was very simple, just the usual name and product key entry, followed by inserting disk 2 to complete the full installation. Let's just open a Word document and have a look at Clippy, let's turn the volume up. Oh, he just appeared without making the entrance noise. Hi. Dear sir, madam, I put Adam, but whatever, and yeah, of course. It looks like you're writing a letter. Stop. <laughs> no thanks. And then, then he buggers off on the bike. Okay. <laughs> I also decide to add shortcuts to each office program on the desktop. I won't be using these programs that much, but this is roughly how the desktop was laid out years ago. Oh, and one more thing I almost forgot. I needed to activate Windows as I still had not done that yet. All I needed to do was click the Activate Windows notification in the corner, select Activate Windows over the internet, choose not to register with Microsoft, and that was literally it. Windows was now activated on this PC. Now I can use this copy of Windows XP on this PC without worrying about the 30 day trial period. And that is the end of this video. Despite some issues, I was able to get this old PC connected to the internet, apply the latest updates, and get Windows activated, which was all made possible thanks to the people who have worked on this awesome legacy update project. Before this video ends, here's a sneak peek for an upcoming video. I have recently acquired a Packard Bell mouse that matches perfectly with the existing keyboard, along with a speaker system that I happened to find at a second-hand shop for only £10. Hopefully this is something for you guys to look forward to. Oh, and for those of you who want to see more gaming content, I have not stopped. Three Wipeout events have taken place in the past month, and I'll be releasing videos of these events soon. So I hope you're all excited. See you next time.